Hello and welcome to the first episode in Polly's Pantry. Um, I'm Polly, just to clear up any uh, confusion. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, white bread and then I'm going to be showing you a few meringue techniques uh, and some fancy colouring that you can do with them and a little bit of a cordial that I've made for a beautiful summer drink. So please stay tuned and I promise you this will not be a boring tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make just simple white bread. You can make rolls, you can make a loaf, really you can do anything with it. I like bread machines but personally for me I love kind of getting really up close to my ingredients and actually once I find myself eating one too many rolls or too many slices from my loaf I feel it's all worth it once I've put my biceps and sweat and tears and blood into it. So off we go, enough about that. We're going to have some white strong flour here. So it's about 500 grams, but how I like to do it, just in case my scales go wrong or something blows up, it's just nice to know that two full size of these mugs is about 500 grams. So here we go, just to show you. And I am quite messy, so most of it will probably end up on the floor. So now we're just finishing off the last big mug. So it's two large coffee sized mugs, which basically equates to 500 grams. And if I sprinkle a little bit on the surface, it doesn't matter, because when I start kneading my bread, we can just use that then. The good thing I love about making bread, you can get really messy, it doesn't matter, just have some fun with it. So there is our strong white flour in the bowl. Now what we need to do is put some sugar, some salt, and some yeast extract. So here we, so here we go. So again, it's seven grams, but I like to use a dessert spoon because it basically works out the same. So there goes a dessert spoon of yeast. And I only put a teaspoon of sugar in. Um, you can put a teaspoon and a half, but I think there's enough um, enough padding around my hips, so we'll just stick to a teaspoon. Again, it's all personal preference, and I don't really want my bread too sweet, to be honest. I'm putting a teaspoon of salt in, if this will come out. There you go. There you are. Again, you can put a teaspoon and a half in, but I don't really want it too salty, and if you put too much salt in any food, you really can't rectify it, so it's better to be a little less and Hey, no one will know, because not everyone, you know, is a baker. Mind you, I'm not a baker. May I just add, I'm not a chef, I'm not a patisserie chef, and I'm definitely not a baker, but I just love food, I eat all day, and I can't think of anything nicer than sharing some of my absolute favourite basic recipes with you. And once you learn the, you know, the basics, your whole culinary world opens up in front of you, and it's really fun and very exciting. Now we need a good tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil and it really does make a big difference using extra virgin olive oil. Now you can use butter for this recipe and there's nothing wrong with that and if you've got it in your fridge do use it but if you have either or I would strongly recommend extra virgin olive oil. So right, so now all our ingredients are in the bowl. Let's have a quick recap. So we started off with our strong white flour. Uh, it, it works about 500 grams of flour, but if you don't have scales, two large coffee mugs or tea mugs like this size, heaped with a spoon, put in the bowl, will do nicely. Then we have a teaspoon of sugar, caster sugar, we have a teaspoon of salt, uh, and then what we have also done is put a generous tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, and I strongly recommend it being extra virgin olive oil. You get a much nuttier, smooth, just a much better overall taste, and it's delicious. If you do have butter though, do use it, because listen, whatever's in the fridge, butter, oil, whatever, use whatever you can. Let's not waste money, hey? Right, so now everything is in, we're gonna, we're gonna rub it finely to make a sandy, kind of a sandy, grainy consistency. And this gets a little bit mucky and it's quite nice to get a bit dirty. This in itself is a very good workout, of which I'm sure I need many a workout, with all this food I like to make and eat. So now all our ingredients are in the bowl. All that's left now is just to put about 300 mils of kind of lukewarm water 
Um, and if it looks a bit dry, just add a little bit more. You're just going to have to play it by ear. So let's get cracking. Okay, so I've, I used about 350 mils uh, of lukewarm water. Again, if it looks a bit dry, don't panic. You can always add a little bit more. So just play it by ear. So now all the dough is ready to be kneaded. That bit of flour that I unfortunately spilt it all over the place because I am a complete mess. We can now use, you see, to um, flour the work surface. So again, really get involved, get messy. It does not matter a bit. I'm a cook, not a chef, so I can get away with these little things. Right, let's make some mess. Let's have some fun. Right, here comes the workout. So now we want to knead this dough for about 10 minutes. And if it feels like it's sticking, don't panic. Just put a little bit more flour in. Well, I've only got a few minutes left now, and the only reason I'm taking a little bit of a break from the left-hand side of my body is because, oh, um, yeah, I think I've worn the left side out. It must be my stronger arm. So we're just going to um, just strengthen the right wrist up a little bit more. And, um, yeah, so I look so cool in cash, you know. I can have chat, you know, I'm a woman of the world, I'm a mother, multitasking, you know. Oh, nearly there, nearly there. Not long to go now. Right, I've got about five minutes kneading left, and... Oh my lord, this is therapy, physical therapy in itself. Do you know what? I feel so much better, I feel relaxed. And yeah, that, that list has reduced significantly now. Good job I had my spinach for breakfast because the old biceps are burning, feel the burn. Right, well that's 10 minutes done, thank goodness for that. We now have a beautiful dough. So what we're gonna do now, if you watch very carefully, I'm going to pin each corner of the dough in like this and then turn it over, so a nice smooth surface, and with the insides of my little hands, I'm going to do a choppy chop effect. Just watch. We're going to roll it and slide our hands underneath, constantly moving and rotating it in a circular motion. Why do we do this, I hear you cry? Well, actually, I have no idea. It just feels right, so there we go. Let's carry on because it feels good. Anyway, once I've done this, which I have no idea why I'm doing it, but it looks good and professional, we're then going to put it in a lightly greased bowl. So here we go. Why do we do this, I hear you cry? To stop, as, it's, as the um, fermentation process kicks in, we don't want it sticking to the bowl. So a little bit of olive oil is gonna do the trick. It's gonna loosen us up nicely. So now we're putting a bit of extra virgin olive oil. Give it a good old rub. Get your hands in, get your greasy hands in. Don't be afraid to get dirty. No wrong and right in this. Right, so there's my bowl, nicely oiled. Because I've got some flour on my surface, and I'm definitely not going to wipe my hands on my clothes, or am I? No. Um, I'm going to just simply do this. It looks a bit messy, but it doesn't matter. Get all that oil off. Give it a clap. Give your bread a little check. And plop it in there, like so. So now we're going to put a little bit of clean film over my bowl. You can put a tea towel. Uh, a damp tea towel. Again, I'm not even going to pretend to you. I don't know why I put clean film on. I think I've got it in the cupboard. And I'm definitely not going out to the shop just to go and get a brand new tea towel because I'm just not doing it. So I have clean film and I'm sure this will work a treat. Here we go. Give it a good wrap. Happy birthday piece of dough. Now I'm going to unwrap my dough. There you go. So the dough has doubled in size. So now what we want to do and just flour, you can use the strong flour again. Just dust your work surface down. Don't worry about the mess. Rub your hands together. Peel it out of the bowl, like so. Put the bowl to one side. Maybe a little bit more flour, because I've got obviously the oil where it's sweated. Give your dough a damn good poke. You want to release all that air. So this is how we do it. Poke, 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 poke. Now just gently, very gently, knead your dough not too hard. You can hear it squeezing and fizzing and popping as the air is released. A bit like my partner on a Saturday night. So we're just going to gently knead our dough. 
keep releasing all those little whiz pop whiz bang air pockets. It's a very musical bit of day we're having this afternoon, isn't it? Maybe it will sing happy birthday to me. What was that day? No. It's all those sleepless nights with the baby. It's driving me nuts. I'm talking to myself now. Now call me odd, but do you know what? Just smelling, oh, just smelling that dough. There's something about that yeasty, oh, I just love it. I, do you know what? I could just smell this all day. I suppose there are worse things to sniff, aren't there? So I've gently kneaded my bread now for about five minutes and I've poked lots of holes in it, released all the air. And yes, we've had a musical, musical kneading time together, but it is now time to fold our little bit of dough up into these corners like this, look. Turn it round, it's a bit sticky, don't worry, put a bit more flour on your hands. And then again, like I said before, turn your bread in a circular motion, chop your hands under to create a nice little circular ball. Again, why are we doing this? I have no idea, it just looks good. I saw it on TV once, it looked quite good. So this dough is now ready to be partitioned up. I'm going to make eight rolls, okay, out of my white dough. Now, just to take a step back here, I'm just doing a plain bog standard white, white, white rolls. But if you wanted to put some mixed herbs, olives, sun dried tomato, basically anything you like, you can put that in with the flour at the beginning stage. Just bang it in. It's, it, just do it. It tastes delicious. And maybe in another Polish pantry, I will, I will show you some herby infused bread, some cheese, bits of bacon. We'll just go for it. We'll have a lovely time together. Anyway, I'm now going to put the oven on. My oven needs to be about 210, between, two, well, 210. 200 celsius okay everyone's ovens are different so just be mindful of that one person's oven might need to be less more i know my oven so i know what it needs to go on about 210 maybe I'll, after 10 minutes i might just turn it down to about 25 so let's turn the oven on right i'm now gonna cut my dough up okay the easiest way to do this do it in half Please don't worry about my worktop. It's, uh, it's had many things happen to it. A little bit of a scratch isn't gonna kill it. Okay, now I'm gonna cut it in half again. Now you could weigh this. If you really wanted to be absolutely precise, you could weigh this, but I really can't be bothered. One of the joys I think about home baking is it looks quite nice when it's a bit uneven. It's homemade, let's keep it rustic. So what we're doing, so we cut the dough in half. Then cut it again the other way, so you've got four, basically four quarters. And then cut each quarter again in half. So you end up with eight little kind of triangles, really. Again, I can't be bothered to weigh my dough to get it absolutely right, because I quite like it when one's a bit big, one's a bit, it's more bit like the human race, really. We're all different sizes. So here we go. Here are my eight little dollops. Let's put them to one side. I do need a little bit of flour because my bottom is a bit sticky. Right, rub your hands together. Now, individually, very important, please pay attention. So again, knead all the little corners, nip them in neatly like that, flip it over, and again, Polly's useful, useless tips of why we do this, because someone on TV did it and they look really quite good, look quite fun as well. And what I also think is quite fun is just to give it a little bit of a twirl. Give it a little bit of a cartwheel. This ensures that it's all round and even. Lovely. That little ball is ready to be plonked on our greaseproof paper tray. So here I am plonking. I'm just going to purely put some, um, just put a bit of sprinkling of um, flour on my dough. And I kind of want that basic rustic kind of a little bit, cr uh, a little bit crusty on the outside. But I don't want anything fancy. I just want to sit down tonight with a crusty roll, you know, a big bowl of homemade soup and just, just lose myself in heaven. These now need to go in the oven. Well, I set the oven temperature at about 210C. So um, they will probably only take about 20 to 25 minutes to bake. If they're looking like they're getting a bit too brown, I'll just turn the oven down. Uh, and if they need to come out before then, I mean, this, this is just a guide. The temperature is a guide and the 20-ish minutes is also a guide. Again, everyone's oven is different. Your, your little blobs that you plonked on your plate might be a bit bigger, a bit smaller. Just suck it and see, have fun, give it a try. Right, goodbye my beautiful white balls of delight. I hope to see you on the other side where you'll be lovely and golden and delicious to eat.
And as Polly does in her pantry, my signature is Bosch. Right, let's see how our golden nuggets are doing. Let's have a look. Wow, do you know what? They look yummy, yummy, delicious. I think it's time for Miss Guy's dinner. Here we go. Look at those beauties. Do you know what? It's worth, absolutely worth, making your own homemade bread. The satisfaction I get seeing these is just amazing. Right, so my bread rolls, I've just been taken out of the oven. They were put in at 210. I did turn them down to about 200 after about 10 minutes. Um, and again, everyone's oven's different. You'll just have to go by visual on what they look like in your oven. Anyway, so I've got some beautiful rolls here. And, um, oh look, some ham and some beef tomatoes and a little bit of um, whole grain mustard. Um, good old Norfolk, good for mustard. Anyway, so I think I'm gonna make myself a delicious sandwich. So here goes. Look at that soft, fluffy dough. So I'm just gonna make my sandwich. Um, and you know, it's just a bit of comfort food. It's not fancy, not much work, but the bread is homemade. And um, sometimes the basic things in life are just perfect. So I'm gonna really look forward to eating this in a minute. Well, after all that kneading and a uh, bit of bicep workout I did this morning with making my bread, I'm gonna damn well go and enjoy myself now. So here goes. Oh my God, that's so good. I know my mother always said don't talk with your mouth full, but oh my God. Seriously good. Mm. I'm gonna go and put my feet up and watch a little bit of TV. See you later. Right, probably time to put the oven on now. Yes, you may think, what on earth is she doing wearing such a deliciously red dress? I am actually going out to a dinner party this evening. So next on our agenda, while the oven is getting nice and hot, I've got Holly's little um, pinny, just to keep this nice and clean. And we're gonna do some meringues now. So um, let's buckle up and go for it. Okay, so I'm all pinnied up. Uh, we're gonna start on some meringues. There is a difference between meringue and pavlova. I haven't decided which I feel like taking to my party yet, but that I will soon, I will soon uh, make that quite clear. I'm a bit parched though, so I would quite like a little drink. Now, funnily enough, I had some excess strawberries, so I managed, before I made some homemade jam, I made a little bit of a coolie, and I've got some, a beautiful tonic, and if you mix the two together, it makes a delightful summer drink, so let's go. Right. I do need a little drink, so here goes. I had a little bit of strawberry left over from one of my desserts I made earlier. So this is just a strawberry coolie. So that's a bit of strawberry, handful of strawberries, in fact it doesn't matter how many strawberries, sprinkle healthily, cast sugar all over it, put it in a saucepan on a very low heat, just gently, you wanna get all that strawberry sweet aroma, nice and gently, just simmer away for a few minutes, turn off the heat, and get your blender out, a handheld one is fine, and blitz the hell out of it until you have a beautiful, frothy, thick, pinky kind of liquid. I personally like the seeds in my coolie. I, I cannot, I haven't got time to be sitting and straining. You know, come on, it's all good for you. It goes down the same way. A bit of wholesome stuff. So, here goes. This makes a beautiful non-alcoholic drink with just some of the food I had left over. So I've basically made myself a strawberry cordial, effectively, and I've got some really cold, fizzy lemonade, and I'm gonna pour the two together. And look at this beautiful color you get, almost slightly like a carver or a brute. There you go, I need 10 out of 10 for not pouring it all over the floor, really. Look at that, can you look how beautiful that color is? All organic, all good for you. Look at that, how beautiful is that? So now I'm going to have a sip to refresh myself. Mmm, delicious. So another little tip from Polly's Pantry. Um, like I said, I made a uh, jam earlier and I had some strawberries left over. So we put them in a saucepan. It doesn't matter how many, whatever. Just bung a handful in, a lot in, whatever you've got. And sprinkle a little bit of caster sugar over. If you want, squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in and just simmer it for a few minutes. Anyway. 
I put it in the fridge to cool. You could put, pour this on top of a pavlova as a sauce, a cake, any kind of accompaniment, what you like. But because after all that making that bread and kneading, I am so parched. So I, I'm a bit dry, so I need to get a bit wet. So I poured some strawberry cooling into my beautiful flute and topped it up with a little bit of tonic. You could use tonic, you could use lemonade. In fact, you could have a summer cocktail. It doesn't have to be non-alcoholic, but because I've got to go out later and I've still got motherly duties to do, best stay off the old wagon for a bit longer. Anyway, cheers, delicious. Right, so for my dinner party that I am very eager and excited to go to this evening, one of my friends, I said I'd take a pudding. Now, I am the queen of meringue, whether it be little kisses, strawberry kisses, pavlova meringue, I'm your lady. So, right before you is a few little desserts I knocked up earlier. A colourful plethora of delightful yummies. We have mini pavlovas, these are the red ones. So they'll be hard on the outside, soft in the middle. And then we've got the orange twirly, these are my sunset kisses, they're like little golden nuggets. Um, these are just going to be, these are just meringue. And the blue swirly ones, again, are a kind of combination between the two. And here, the big one, is the two-tone, almost slightly rhubarb effect, um, pavlova. It looks a bit lopsided, but you know what? It looks more artistic. In my hand, this beautiful golden sun-kissed nugget is going to be delicious. And just to prove how delicious this is and how, um, Kind of dry it is because it's a meringue, not pavlova. I will prove to you. Ready? Mmm. That is amazing. That is. Do you know what? I'm going to stop talking and that takes something. Excuse me. Mmm. Mmm. Amazing. So, what I'm quickly doing now is just going to slice up some strawberries. We've got some raspberries and some blueberries here. And what I'm going to do is then whisk some cream and we're going to start loading and filling my desserts. I will be showing you in the second series to Polly's Pantry how I made all these, how I got the perfect colour, the swizzles, what the cooking temperatures, the amounts, consistency, that will all come to follow in episode two. So don't panic, I just wanted to give you a little taster into Pandora's box. So now I'm just going to, we've got all our fruit ready, our mise en place, our preparation is done. I'm now going to put into my double cream, I'm going to put in a little bit of vanilla extract. Now if you had real vanilla pods, just scrape some of the seeds out and that would be beautiful. I don't have it, I'm just using what I've got in my cupboard. A little bit of icing sugar, you should use a sieve but you know what I'm like, bish bosh bash, job done, lovely. So now we're just going to put that on full speed and whisk the living daylights out of it. So now I'm just going to plate up some of my puddings and just construct them and show you what you can do in little bits and pieces to turn it into some amazingly glamorous, totally OTT piece of artwork. Uh, and as if you know me, you know I love gold. So here's my gold board. Let's start with some mini blue ones. They're so beautiful. They look, they look like they should be in the circus, don't they? I'm going to put a bit of cream in between each one and as you can see, no weeping of sugar, so I know that the mixture was perfect. And then I'm going to put a few blueberries in like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, however, whatever. And then just sandwich between, leave that there like that, a little bit more on there. And then just sandwich the two together. And look how beautiful that looks. So simple. Just meringue, it's just egg whites, sugar, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of time, a little bit of passion, a bit of love, and you can create really something quite beautiful that really is going to be a total showstopper at tonight's dinner party. We'll do some of the pavlova, we're going to stack up my pavlova now. So they're meringue, and these are my mini pavlovas. So here goes. You might think, what on earth are you doing, ruining that beautiful top, but bear with me, there is relevance. And it doesn't have to be perfect, this is the beauty of cooking. It can get messy, it can be a bit lopsided. There you go. I want a tower. 
I'm going to stack it as high as I can. This really belongs in the circus, this dish. Mmm, absolutely delicious. Now, for the piece de resistance. I don't want to overdo it. I just want a few bits of fruit stacked up, like so. Maybe a raspberry. We all like a raspberry. And then I'm going to pour over my coolie to make a beautiful fountain. Look at that. Imagine that on the middle piece of a dinner party table. What can you say? Is it food? Is it art? No, it's just Polly's pantry. So now I'm just doing my last dessert, which is a pavlova, okay? To finish off, we're going to my party in a little while. So we've got double cream, a bit of mixed fruit. And because I've got some spare berries left, we'll just put a few of those around. There you go. And you know what, just for a bit of fun, because I've got some leftover colours, I'm just going to dab these on, like so, to create an unbelievably colourful circus pudding treat. There we go, we have a pavlova, and we have my tower of pavlova, and we have the mini meringues stuffed with fruit. Well, thank you so much for watching the first edition to Polly's Pantry. Uh, please stay tuned for the second series. We'll, I will be showing you how to make these two-tone meringues and pavlovas. Um, thank you so much for watching, and um, if you don't mind, I'm going to have a quick swig of my non-alcoholic beverage and get ready for my party tonight. Many thanks, and thank you for watching.